Give all the praises and the honor to Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shai Bahashim, Rechaha Kodash, and double honors to the elder apostles and bishops of Great Millstone. Honors as well and salutes uh, to your other brethren, your fellow believers of the of the faith, even if you sisters, you supporters of the truth. Shalom to the elect. I want to touch on a video. I didn't. Ju I just now getting around to it. It was a brother yesterday and I hope he receives it he asked the question a question that's not you know first Peter 3 and 15 says always be ready to give an answer for every man to ask you a question in a reason of the hope of his calling so no question that is asked as long as it's in hope and sincerity is wrong so anyway he says Shalom I got a quick question I never understood from all these camps and those that follow the Scaligarian chronology, which goes, I believe, to a new form. Chronology is, is time, you know, with dealing with the prophets, you know, coming up saying, I prophesy this and I prophesy that, and, and there's nothing happening, right? And doctrine. Would prophet have any one of them of your camps given that came to pass to be considered a prophet? So I answered a little bit, and, I, I, and I'll and i try to get the understanding through this lesson. I have to answer and read his other comment. He says, the same question, I, this is what I said. I said the same question may have been asked from uh, to Noah, right, until the flood came, but simply prophesying the times of the upcoming destruction, starting with the collapse of the dollar. Matthew 1036, talking about the, the breaking up of families, right, the mark of the beast, I can only speak for GMS, not other camps, because it seems as though they're in league with the system. They won't talk about certain things. I said, Shalom. So he says, it could have been asked of Noah, Jeremiah, uh, Micah, or Micaiah as well. The only difference is that the prophet is given a message by the Most High, right? And they hide it not that it is the mess well that's the, the, the thing with us we don't hide it either that's why in revelation 13 we talk about the mark and what's coming there's other groups who know it right and but they don't push it they hide it you're not supposed to hide it but we'll we'll get into it they hide it not that is a message from him the only difference is the prophet is given the message by the most high and they hide it not right as jeremiah clearly states not because he read someone else's prophecy that is yet to be fulfilled or to come to pass. Right, some uh, other false prophet. Because it's very dangerous to proclaim yourself a prophet and speak words of the Most High that, that, that did not send you with. Right, so the question is, how did we get the understanding of the Most High and everything about the Most High, especially with the uh, translations the way the Bible is written, okay, from the Hebrew, Greek, but now to the English. So it has to be taught. And the scripture says that you must be uh, you must be taught. Okay? There's nothing wrong with a man teaching you. But we'll keep we'll keep going. <clears throat> okay. Um, because it's very dangerous to proclaim yourself a prophet and speak the words of the most high. That is true. He's absolutely right if you're not speaking the words of the Most High, okay? Clearly states, and, and is in the Torah, an Israelite's duty is to uncover false prophets and stone them, right? Prophets speak with the Most High or his angels, so by Bible standards, none can be called a prophet and shouldn't unless the Most High spoke unto them. I'm just now reading this, by the way. I, I haven't even read this, this, this comment. Maybe there's another explanation I missed. Thank you for answering Shalom. So I asked him, did he want me to do a lesson on it? And I said, okay. So first we're going to go to Jeremiah 28 and 8, right? Jeremiah 28, the prophets that have been before me and before thee of old prophesied against many countries and against great kingdoms of war and peace and evil and pestilence. Okay, so those same prophets are going to rise again, and we're going to go into some reincarnation. 
right? That's very important to understand. When you're dealing with chronology, you're dealing with the, the, the dealing with time, so to speak. So uh, the day of the Lord is a thousand years. So his time is not our time. So as I quoted with Noah um, prophesying about a hundred or hundred plus years, and nobody believed him, even though he was saying it. Well, it was just him that the Lord set up to prophesy for that. But as time went on, the Lord did use other people to um, use his, bring his message. Even with Jeremiah, right? Okay. Even with, when you look at Moses, Moses' older brother was Aaron. And really when Moses went into Egypt, the Lord, uh, Moses asked the Lord said, hey, I'm not an eloquent speaker. It came my older brother because he can speak um, the language pretty good. So we see that in this situation, but we're going to show you situations too that when we lost our identity or we went a whoring, right, that the Lord will use other people to come to other people to um, proclaim his prophecies, okay? We're going to go to Matthew uh, 24 and 24. It says, For there shall arise false messiahs and false prophets and shall shew great signs and wonders and it is so much that they would, if it were possible, they would shall deceive the very elect. So now, we're going to go to, um, let me go to Ezekiel 3 and 17. <clears throat> when I should say unto the wicked, uh, it says 17, Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the words of my mouth and give them warning from me. When I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning. Now speakest to warn him from his wicked way, the same uh, shall save his life. And the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity. But his blood will I require in thy hand. So as I was thinking about this, I'm actually just going through this. When Yahawashah told the prophets, right? He had the disciples, apostles and disciples. There was a lot of things he said. And he said, well, some of you should not even taste death. But they still died. So what was that talking about? Right? There was a lot of things that he said that they thought was going to come to pass right then and there or in their lifetime and it hadn't you can look that up even when he read I will not drink the fruit of this vine until I drink it new with you in my father's kingdom when did they think that was going to happen did they think that was going to happen over 2000 years later that's a question so you can see that you would have had people calling him a false prophet Okay, the Pharisees did. They didn't think he was being truthful. In fact, he said, before Abraham was, I was, I am. They had an issue with that. Right? So we're going to give an example. We're going to give a clear cut example. In 2 Chronicles, this is actually a woman. Okay? 2 Chronicles, you can read the whole 34th chapter. Um, this is going to a hold of the prophetess, right? And it says, I'm going down, right? So the Lord will send the message and then that message will come and then that person will send the message. So I guess what this brother is saying is, um, well, let me read it and let's see. I'm going to get to the point. Second Chronicles 34 and 24. Thus saith the Lord. It's not saying that what we're saying isn't true. It just hasn't happened yet. And there's a lot of things that are happening. And this is why we're bringing out the prophecies. We, we years ago, starting with Elder Apostle Tahar, right? Going with the mark, right? Going with the, the crash of the dollar. We've been pushing that. Pushing and pushing and pushing. Right? It hasn't happened yet. But yes, we've been pushing it in the hopes of our salvation. Right? It says here, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will bring evil upon this place and upon the inhabitants. And let me go up. And Hil Hilkiah, and they were the king that appointed, went to Huldah the prophetess, the wife of Shalom, the son of Tikvah, and the son of Hezra. Let me just get to the point. And she answered them, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Tell ye the man that sent you to me, 
Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will bring evils upon the place, this place, and upon the inhabitants thereof, even all the curses that are written in the book which have read before the king of Judah. Right? Then it goes on down to say, Because they have forsaken me and have burned incense unto other gods, that they might provoke me to anger with all the works of their hands. Therefore my wrath shall be poured out upon this place and shall not be quenched. And as for the king of Judah who sent you to inquire of the Lord, so shall you say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God concerning Israel, um, Israel concerning the words he has heard. But thine heart was tender, and thou didst humble thyself before the, uh, Yahweh. It uh, says, when thou heardest his words against this place, his, this place. So we could clearly see he, he saw he read it. When you go into the history, they uh, re, I believe rebuilt the, the the temple of the Lord, and they they found a book and started humbling themselves to the Lord. And against the inhabitants thereof, humble them thyself before me, and didst rent thy clothes and weep before me. I have even heard thee, also saith the Lord. It says, behold, I will gather thee to thy fathers. And thou shalt be gathered to thy grave in peace. Neither shall thine eyes see all the evil that I will bring upon this place and into the inhabitants uh, of the same. I think this was Josias. Uh, so that so they brought the king word again. So we can see that Holder said this, but this didn't happen yet. Right? So you have to understand that there would have been people who heard of this. And because things was going so great, they wouldn't have believed that that was going to happen. But it ultimately did happen. So it's not the fact that the timing, that's what we're going on. The timing, just because we're saying this and it hasn't happened yet, it doesn't mean that it's not going to happen. The problem with when we're dealing with the camps, there's many doctrines and the Most High created many doctrines. Apostle Paul said, mark them that cause division contrary to the doctrine. So this is Ecclesiastes 1 and 9 all over again. This has happened before and it's going to happen again. So we can see that the Lord has used people to tell other people, to tell other men. Right? We're going to get another example with Samuel. Um, 2 Samuel 7 and 4 And it shall come to pass that night that the, the word of the Lord came unto Nathan saying, Go and tell thy servant David, thus saith the Lord, shalt thou build me a house for me to dwell in. So wait a minute. And, David, and, and Nathan was like a, an advisor of David. Why didn't he just tell David? Clearly the Lord dealt, dealt with David. But he sent Nathan? Let's go on. This is where it's going to all clear up when I get to this point. This is the reason why I read those stories. But I, if you got to read the whole 2 Samuel 7 chapter, um, and you just got to, you know, it's the Spirit's got to be with you to understand it, okay? It says, uh, let me get to the point, verse 12. And when the days be fulfilled, that thou wilt sleep with thy fathers, I will set up thy seed after thee, which would be Solomon, okay? Which shall proceed out of thy bowels, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. Right? I will be his father and he shall be my son. If he commit iniquity, I will chastise him with the rod of men. It's talking about Solomon. Right? Okay, now, we're going to get into that too. So now, if, if he's saying if Solomon commits iniquity, he'll be chastised by the rod of men, right? Just remember that. Then it says, and with the stripes of the children of men, but mercy shall not depart away from him, as I took it from Saul, whom I put away before thee. It's all about David, right? And thy house and thy kingdom shall be established forever. So we're going to stop there. Now we got to understand Solomon, who did commit iniquity, Right, he did commit iniquity, and the Lord did not chastise him with the stripes of men. So now we got to understand what's happening here. So now we're going to move on. We're going into reincarnation. This is all important.
Because when you're dealing with time, you're dealing with reincarnation. You're dealing with things that might have been said that hasn't happened yet. So this being said, and Nathan the prophet is saying this to David already back then, and it wasn't until years later that we're going to show you what happened. Because he didn't get struck with the um, rods of men. And the Lord is not a liar. We know that. So to understand all of this, you must understand reincarnation also. I believe I put that in the, in the scripture um, when I did leave it to the brother, whoever he is. And again, we hope he gets it. You know, that, that's that's our job. I, our job really is just to, just to feed the elect in the hopes that you get it. Ecclesiastes 1 and 9, the thing that has been is that which shall be, it be, and that which is done is that which shall be done, and there's no new thing under the sun. Is there anything where it might be said, see, this is new? It has been already of old time, which was before us. There is no remembrance of former things in the past. We're dealing with chronology now, and there is no, and there shall be no any remembrance for things that are to come with your future, with those that shall come after, right? Um, Let's go to Matthew real quick. Sum all this up. Matthew 22 and 42, 41. While the Pharisees was gathered together to say here, Jesus, Yahweh Shah asked them, saying, What ye think of Christ, the Messiah? Whose son is he? Now, why is he asking this? Why is he asking this? Everybody should know he's the son of the Most High, right? Or, as we teach, that he's the son of, of Joseph in the physical flesh, but he's the actual son of the Most High. They said unto him, the son of David, right? So who was the son of David? We can read this in Matthew, the first chapter. He said unto them, how then doth David in the spirit call him Lord? So now we see that how, how is David calling his own son Lord? <laughs> how is that happening? Because the Lord can do that. The Lord can have your own son be up over you. It says, but we can see in the spirit, like your son might have been uh, your father at one point of time, right? It says, the Lord said unto my Lord, sit thou on my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. If David then call him Lord, how is he his son? So we going back to what Nathan the prophet uh, said to uh, David, the stripes of men he will get. So this is why the one you call Jesus, Yahawashah, when he came back, he got the whips. The Most High is not going to do anything without some form of justification of what he does. Nothing. You see people born blind, deaf, or they, they die early from cancer or whatever it is. It's judgments. You have to play out your role. You really think he just sent his son here just to get whipped? No, that has a consequence in it. But in his life, no, he didn't sin in the life he came in. Okay? That's why we're so much closer to the Lord because guess what? He already sinned. He, he, he sent his son to literally sin as Solomon. Okay? So then it says, If David then called him Lord, how is he his son? And no man was able to answer him a word, neither does any man from this day uh, uh, ask any more uh, questions so you know to sum it all up the Lord uses whom he will to deliver his message he, he, uh, he can use whatever he will whatever he wants and whoever he wants to deliver his message and the message that's be being delivered is not always in a timely manner that we look for it to be delivered it can be hundreds of years later. It can be thousands of years later, right? The Hawashah came is a messenger, the one you call Jesus, and he died, right? Um, and it's 2,000 years later, but guess what? It's been two days to the Lord, and he promised to come back, but he hasn't come back yet. So you got to question yourself, okay, is he a prophet because he said he's going to do something and it hasn't happened? Well, yeah, he's actually the ultimate prophet because... It, he's everything the Lord said is going to happen. He's the son of the most high. It's just not in our time. Anyway, that's all I have on that. Shalom.